When Dr. Maria Karstarfin assumed the role of Atlanta Public Schools superintendent in 2014, the agency was mired in a notorious cheating scandal, one that would lead to the criminal prosecution of 34 educators, as well as the former superintendent. The scandal would erode trust in public education, for Karstarfin to take on a position under intense scrutiny and relentless skepticism, she had to tread carefully. Combining compassion and moxie, she unveiled a comprehensive plan that shifted Atlanta City Schools curriculum away from high-stakes standardized testing to one that focused on so-called development of the whole child. And the effect, based on statistics, has proved positive. So what makes someone want to lead what is possibly one of the most scrutinized jobs around? we found out in today's Executive Profiles. What was life like in Selma, Alabama? Selma is a very, very small town, but it has a huge presence in our national mindset. So what impact did it have on you as a kid? Were you yeah. aware of that as a kid? Was it well, I was born, definitely born after, the, you know, the, the height of uh, the movement and the marches. But, uh, but in Selma, time kind of stood still. It was very segregated. There were private white academies uh, where most of the affluent white kids went to school, but, um, but in the public Public schools, it was really the only option for African Americans. They went from very kind of segregated to a little integration and then segregated again and still are today. Uh, what kind of student were you? I was an honor student, an AP student. Um, I did my work, I went to school, I wasn't a troublemaker, uh, except when it came to issues of social justice where you know, there were moments where my parents probably wanted to throttle me, uh, where uh, people would wish that you just would just not talk about that because this is the way things are. Um, but think, is, but I pushed on that. Do you have yeah. one example you know, of, like of it where always social bothered justice me. It always bothered me that when they would do the homecoming courts, they would um, have two slates, a white slate and a black slate. I just couldn't understand that. Yeah. That, was, um, that was very troublesome to me. And I, I challenged that when I was in middle school and raised a lot of questions about you know, why, wh why are we doing it this way? Tell me about your path to a career in education. I started off in um, journalism. I was on assignment in Las Minas de, de Baruta in Caracas, Venezuela, and I was helping the nuns uh, go into the shanty town to uh, teach. And I was, and while I was studying Spanish in college, it was one of my majors. I started teaching every day, teaching in Spanish to kids who probably were already undereducated. There's nothing more rewarding than teaching a kid to read, seeing the light in their eyes, knowing that you have made a fundamental brain change that, um, that is gonna make their life better for the rest of, there's nothing you can undo about getting a better education. I uh, volunteered for my home uh, church. I you know, was working in schools and, and then took a teaching job in my hometown. I went back, back and Selma. started teaching. In middle school teaching. in Selma. I did, I did. I was a, a full-time Spanish teacher. So making the leap from being a middle school teacher in Selma, Alabama to being a superintendent what is that like for you? What was it like for you and what would it like for other people? I just wanted to get my master's. I wanted to, you know, I was thinking about getting a doctorate, but I thought, you know, I'll go and kind of knock out my master's. And, and while I was in my graduate school program, I met the first African-American vice provost for um, Auburn University. We became quick friends. He became a great mentor. And he said to me, you know, if you are, if you are serious about having the impact that you talk to me about, you need to think about as part of your career path going into not just any superintendency, but an urban large city superintendency. So I'm gonna recommend you to Harvard University's graduate school program for urban superintendents that specifically supports and looks for people of color, women, and in different areas of the nation, and they get you ready for the job. I've only worked in capital cities because I'm, I'm, I want to be with the policy work that happens at a state level with governors and legislators. I um, make sure that it is urban because I want to work for the people who look like me right. and the families who need someone to have that voice. Um, and I also, um, I want it to be really hard. So you've had uh, three superintendent jobs. St. Paul, Minnesota, Austin, Texas, Atlanta, Georgia. Yes. Um, what would Maria Kostarfin, Atlanta, Georgia, 2019, tell the same woman who stepped into the role back in St. Paul, Minnesota today about 
about managing a school, just a large school district and, and what are the challenges you have to face on a daily basis? The doctorate student in me says, you know, I would um, hand him the book by Susan Moore Johnson, Leading to Change, who lays out a three-pronged paradigm for how you should look at leadership, especially in uh, urban superintendency. I thought she did a really good job of laying out like what you should expect and how you will be killed in this job if you don't develop a very fine-tuned radar for the political landmines and how to read when they may be coming around the corner. But if I was still able and had time, I would write to Susan today and said she needs to add a fourth prong. And I think that is about the social and emotional skill set that you have to have to be able to connect with the public that you serve. Do you have the background, the temperament, the willingness to engage with the people who are in a culture, in a community that may or may not be your inspiration? You've got to feel it and you've got to mesh with it. So Atlanta is the hardest job I think I'll ever have in my life, and yet, I think I am the best match for this community. I really do. I love the people I serve in this job. If you're not working for, for the, the children and the future workforce, if, you, if that does not make you ecstatic every day, don't do it. According to the Atlanta Public School System, the district's graduation rate increased from 59% in 2014 to 80% last year. It also achieved year-over-year -year gains in the percentage of students scoring proficient and above on 18 of 24 end-of-grade and end-of-course assessments.